Hi everyone, meteorologist Brian Bennett. The purpose of this video is to talk about how hurricanes can impact red tide and in particular how Hurricane Michael is going to impact the horrific red tide event that we're dealing with in Florida. First of all, can a hurricane eradicate red tide? Absolutely, it's done so before, but it does depend on the track of the hurricane. Back in 2005, we had red tide eradicated by Hurricane Katrina. Katrina moved due west right across southern Florida. Keep in mind, any tropical system in the northern hemisphere is going to have winds that rotate counterclockwise around the storm. That meant throughout the duration of Katrina, Florida had winds blowing from the east, to the west and that meant that the harmful algal bloom offshore of the Florida Gulf Coast was sent to sailing. It went offshore and dispersed and in a couple of days we had much better water quality. Uh, of course I gotta mention I know Katrina was a really bad hurricane when it moved up into New Orleans causing a lot of damage and quite a few casualties but I am approaching this from the standpoint of the impact that it had on red tide of course. All right, so before Hurricane Katrina, take a look at these water samples. Very high concentrations of Carinia brevis offshore of the west coast of Florida. After the hurricane, boom, the water was looking good. It was healthy again. All that nasty water had been blown way out to sea and dispersed, so it had a very positive effect other than one catch. The hurricane actually moved across southern Florida, so it brought some strong winds and some heavy rain to southern Florida and those strong winds really whipped up some big waves and stirred up the nutrients that were sitting in some sediments on the bottom of Lake Okeechobee. So that meant that we had more nutrients been, being pumped out into the Gulf. Additionally, we had a lot of heavy rain, so that meant more agricultural runoff as well. So with more nutrients and more runoff, well, guess what? Less than a year later, we would be we were dealing with another red tide event in 2006 that took up much of the Gulf Coast. So it did give a temporary reprieve, but due to the heavy rain and wind over Okeechobee and the Clusatchee River Basin, it actually ended up bringing the red tide back again. All right, Hurricane Michael. Completely different type of storm with a different direction that could have much different impulse, uh, different results, and potentially uh, it could actually make red tide worse on parts of the Gulf Coast of Florida. And I hate to say that, I'm hoping it doesn't, but uh, that is a possibility. The storm, for the most part, is going to be moving from the south to the north, making landfall Wednesday afternoon in the Florida Panhandle. And if you're concerned about some of the actual uh, weather impacts. I am going to be making another video later today based on some of the latest models showing where the storm is likely to make landfall precisely and the impacts it will have on Florida. But for this video though I'm focusing primarily on red tide. So again we have a north to south moving hurricane. Winds again rotating counterclockwise around the storm and what that means this time, instead of having a nice offshore wind, we're going to have a wind that's blowing from the south to the north and then eventually becoming from the west to the east, which could actually not only drag some of the nasty Carinia brevis water to the north, but it could actually bring it closer to our area beaches as well. So uh, I'm hoping that we end up not having too much of a negative impact from this storm, but the potential does exist. Here's a look at the latest satellite imagery. And I've outlined in the orange here where I can see some brown tint to the water indicating the presence of Crinia brevis and red tide. And I gotta say though, over the last week or so, we've had some pretty good easterly winds and that's really helped to improve the red tide situation at a lot of our immediate coastlines and even some of the offshore stuff. Look how skinny this area of red tide is offshore of Sarasota and Venice area. It's maybe only four or five miles wide. So it has improved with those easterly winds. With that said though, kind of the, the big glaring thing here is this big blob of brown murky water offshore of Sanibel. Of course, this is right here by the entrance of the Clusahatchee River and the exit of the Lake Okeechobee waters. So maybe just a coincidence that there's such a bloom here, but nonetheless, we got a big 50 mile wide bloom of Carinia brevis right here. 
And what happens if you take a southwesterly current? Well, what that's going to do is it's going to drag this to the north and potentially bring it closer to our area beaches as well. But really, the big question will be is how concentrated is this? I know I can see the brown murky water from our satellite image here, but is this more of a low to medium concentration or is it a high concentration? And that's really going to make the difference in how bad the conditions get on area beaches or if by chance this ends up having a, a positive effect. And I'm going to go into that in a bit more in just a second. But first of all, today, Monday, we're looking at uh, currents that are blowing offshore. So again, a kind of a positive thing going on with the worst surface Carinia Brevis being driven away from area beaches. That's going to start to change on Tuesday though because of the hurricane. Remember those counterclockwise winds? Well, that's going to give us a southerly gulf current as we move into the day on Tuesday. So that bloom around Sanibel, that could start to be drug north just a little bit because of that southerly current. And then the currents are actually going to turn from the southwest to the northeast. So any of the offshore stuff could actually be blown towards area beaches on Wednesday. So I think we're going to see the beaches deteriorate a little bit as a result of of the onshore winds blowing some of that crappy water that's farther offshore towards area beaches. And then on Thursday, we're looking at an onshore breeze once again. Friday, the winds will be blowing from the northwest to the southeast, which for the most part is an onshore wind as well. So that's not really great news seeing those onshore winds for a couple of days. All right, so the air quality. The winds are gonna change from the east, like we've had the last couple of days, to a westerly wind on Thursday and Friday, which means those airborne brevitoxins, those stupid little toxins that kind of make you cough and choke when you're near the beach, well, those are going to be blowing ashore, again, especially on Thursday and Friday. So if you're sensitive to those irritants, which most people are, but especially if you have asthma or emphysema, then you probably want to avoid the area beaches on Thursday and Friday. It's not exactly going to be beach-type weather anyway with the nearby hurricane, but uh, if you're sensitive to those irritants, you just might want to stay away from the beaches, again, especially on Thursday and Friday. I want to show you also what happened with Tropical Storm Gordon earlier in September. The storm actually moved across southwestern Florida. Keep it in mind those counterclockwise winds. That meant that we had gulf currents that were blowing to the north and even a little bit to the northwest as that storm moved across Florida. So this is a satellite image before Gordon. And notice that, yeah, it was, it was really bad during this time in Sarasota and down through Venice. Uh, but notice that it really wasn't that wide. Like the, the actual how far out you had to go to get into some cleaner, fresher water wasn't that far, maybe three or four miles on average uh, before the hurricane. And also notice that once you got up into Pinellas County, the water was actually uh, still pretty, pretty pristine. The red tide hadn't really made it up into Pinellas County quite yet, but Gordon changed that. And probably the reason we have bad conditions in Pinellas County today would be because of Tropical Storm Gordon about a month ago. What it did was with those south, with the southeasterly winds, it actually drug a lot of that surface Carinia Brevis to the northwest and blew it offshore of Pinellas County. And with those large waves and the dispersal, it actually made the bloom a little bit wider as well, kind of taking up a bigger area after the storm. So Tropical Storm Gordon ended up kind of making the red tide take up a larger area and it definitely drug it to the northwest as well and this wasn't really immediately obvious right after the hurricane but a couple of days later we got an easterly wind and what that did was it drug that high concentration offshore of pinellas county and pushed that right ashore and also that easterly wind took all the nasty water that was offshore of parts of sarasota manatee and all the way down to parts of Lee County and pushed all that ashore. So we saw a lot of fish kill up and down area beaches a couple of days after the tropical storm. And that was really also the first time that Pinellas County started dealing with the really nasty Crinia brevis and dead fish situation as well. And again, that's largely due 
to what Tropical Storm Gordon did. It drug the nutrients to the north that perhaps would not have happened without the assistance of the tropical storm. So what about Michael? That's what we're concerned about now. Uh, we do know that Hurricane Michael is going to do the following. The large waves associated with it are going to disperse the harmful algal bloom. So the nutrients in the crinia brevis are going to end up covering a larger area than they are right now. So it's just going to kind of shake everything up a little bit. Those surface currents and winds are most likely going to drag the crinia brevis to the north and the northeast toward the area beaches. Again, just based on what the Gulf currents are expected to do, I would think that conditions could deteriorate a bit in Manatee and Sarasota and Pinellas County beaches in particular with those onshore winds and the currents blowing towards area beaches as well. Uh, but there is, this isn't a perfect science. So there's a question of whether this will be a, a net positive effect for the hurricane or a negative event. And a lot of that really depends on how concentrated the water is in this area right here. So you see this big 50 mile nasty area of murky brown water offshore of Sanibel. Well, I don't have any actual surface or water measurements from this area. I checked and to my knowledge, nobody has taken any measurements well offshore of Sanibel. So I'm not sure if this is a highly concentrated area of Crinia brevis or if it's more like a low to medium concentration. All I know from the satellite image is that I can see the brown murky water. I know there's red tide there, but I don't know exactly how concentrated it is. Now, if the water is not highly concentrated, then the large waves could end up dispersing quite a bit of this and end up not having a negative effect on area beaches. And maybe even there could be a net positive effect by kind of shaking everything up and dispersing red tide a bit. But if this is highly concentrated, which the fact that I can see it on a satellite image would kind of lend you to think that it probably is, would mean that it could bring a lot of this to the north and also toward the area beaches on those southwesterly currents. So that's something we need to kind of be prepared for. So again, there, there's two possible scenarios here. And the first scenario, which it would have a positive effect, would be the area offshore of Sanibel is not highly concentrated. So the overall bloom would actually disperse quite a bit. And that could set us on a track for improving conditions. And this is one scenario that I am definitely rooting for. Scenario two would be a negative effect. The area offshore of Sanibel is highly concentrated as opposed to lowly, low concentration. So that bloom would have no problem surviving large waves and being dispersed. And that bloom would end up moving off to the north, covering a larger area and brought closer to shore. And that could result in worsening conditions and additional fish kill. I'm hoping that doesn't happen, but that definitely is a possibility. Either way though, this a little bit of good news though, is that we're not looking at a ton of rain or very strong winds over parts of Lake Okeechobee and the Caloosahatchee River Basin. So that means we don't have to worry about a repeat red tide scenario like we had with Katrina. So those, again, the winds over the lake from Michael are not going to be very strong and we're not going to see a ton of rain over Lake Okeechobee and the Caloosahatchee River Basin. So we don't have to worry about the lake getting all stirred up and loosening up those nutrients. And we don't have to worry about a ton of excess runoff from the rain, uh, adding to a lot more nutrients being pumped out into the Gulf of Mexico. So a little bit of good news there that the immediate lake and the river basin not being impacted too much, but what is already out in the Gulf of Mexico could be pushed to the north, and that would be our greatest concern. So here's the bottom line. Panhandle area, you're dealing with red tide. And in your area, you're going to be dealing with the basically the blunt force of the hurricane. I'm thinking the large waves will likely eradicate red tide in your area. So yeah, you're dealing with a bigger concern with a hurricane looming than red tide right now. But just know that there's a fair chance that this could totally knock red tide out uh, for this go around. All right, what about areas in Southeast Florida? Well, Southeast Florida, you've been dealing with an easterly wind, which has been bringing the Carinia brevis and the toxins on shore. No big changes expected, maybe even a slight worsening of conditions due to increased magnitude of the easterly winds. Uh, but with the winds remaining out of the east, you're going to continue to see uh, 
probably some medium to high levels of crania brevis on the Palm Beach and Broward County beaches, uh, at least over the next couple of days or longer. All right, Southwest Florida, an area that's been, been dealing with red tide for 11 months now for parts of Lee County. Uh, it looks like the bloom is going to disperse a little bit. It's going to be drugged to the north. It's probably going to be drugged closer to area beaches as well. But the question that looms, and, and we probably really won't know until after the hurricane, is how concentrated that 50-mile area of murky water is off the coast of Sanibel. Again, if that's really highly concentrated, then that's going to survive the large waves and, and the dispersal, and that's going to push to the north and make way for murky waters returning to area beaches, especially in Sarasota, Manatee, and Pinellas, and maybe even some additional fish kill as well. But if the water offshore Sanibel is not highly concentrated with Carinia brevis, then the large waves could disperse it enough that we could actually end up having a net positive effect out of this, and Manatee and Sarasota and Pinellas County wouldn't see uh, any worsening of area beaches, and we would be able to continue the trend of improvement that we've seen with the easterly wind, which is something that I am just hoping and praying for. Here's a picture, and this is how I want to end things. This is a picture out of Clearwater Beach last year showing how lovely our beaches are, and this is the reason we live in Florida, for these the beautiful area beaches. It hasn't been that way recently with the murky water offshore. I'm hoping this hurricane can help. My gut's telling me that it's going to drag a lot of this nasty water to the north and could have a negative in impact on red tide. But again, not a perfect science. Something we'll have to continue to monitor. And of course, I'll be posting satellite images immediately after the storm to let you know how things have transpired. But until then, again, keep an eye out for my video later today on the exact weather impacts from the storm. Uh, otherwise, thank you for watching and hope you enjoy the rest of your day.